this lesson is all about the birds and the bees. But mostly the bees. And today we're here with Tara, if she's rooted home. And Tara, please tell us a little bit about your company and how we can get connected to it. Yes, so She's Rooted Home is essentially my family's journey in the Southern California desert, cultivating a homestead, um, sharing our organic lifestyle, and also my crochet basics. Um, and you can find me mostly on Instagram at She's Rooted Home, and then on Facebook, as well as YouTube. That's great. And I'm going to be putting all of those links so you can get connected to Tara and She's Rooted Home and her entire growing experience that's happening here in Southern California. All of those links will be in the comments below. Hi, I'm Charles Malky, biologist and plant expert with Ivory Gangs, where we grow cool plants and author of Saving the World with the Home Garden. And bees are such an important part of the garden and garden landscape. And we want to make sure that we ensure the health of them by practicing good organic and permaculture practices. Today, Tara's gonna to be teaching us about bees. And in fact, she's even got a bee colony here on the property that we're going to be exploring. So the first question I have for Tara is, what are the types of bees that make up a colony? Okay, so you'll have your queen bee. She's the one who lays all of the eggs for the colony. And then you have your workers and even drones. And so the worker bees are essentially the ones that you'll see out in the garden collecting nectar and pollen and bringing it back to the hive. The drone's only purpose is to mate with the queen, not with the other worker bees. So they go out for one flight, follow the queen, and if they successfully mate, they will instantly die. If not, they go back to the colony and they will be fed by the other worker bees until they are kicked out in the fall. So you've got a beautiful peach tree and the bees are there as well. Yes. Are you telling me hopefully there's like male and females are cooperating together? you know, collecting the pollen for the hive? For the most part, it's just gonna be the worker bees, the females. So the females, so all the worker bees are female? Yes. And the males are the drones? That are just kicking it in, in the colony. Waiting in the hive to do their purpose of mating with the queen? Yes. So the worker bees are all female, and as their names imply, they're doing the work. What does yes. that work involve? So from the beginning, they are feeding the larvae. So they are making sure that they have a source of nectar and pollen, um, kind of like a, a bee coffee cake. And then they will cover up those um, larvae cells with wax and eventually the new bees will um, emerge from there. And their job as new bees, new worker bees in the colony is to clean up the hive of all of the mess from the other worker bees. And after a while, they'll graduate into collecting the pollen and nectar from the incoming worker bees. So they actually, the worker bees that are out foraging will meet at the entrance and they will transfer that to the other younger worker bees and they will go store that into the cells. And then from there, they will graduate to um, protectors of the hive and they will sit at the entrance and make sure that there are no intruders making their way in. And then from there, they will leave the hive and collect nectar and pollen and bring it back to newer worker bees. And that whole process will kind of work again. So these worker bees, which again are all female, yes. collect the pollen, collect the nectar, make the honey, feed the young, yep. protect the queen, feed the queen, mm -hmm. and they also guard the hive. Yes. And that's impressive. They have a busy job. They truly do. So in a few short minutes, we're going to send my daughter, Isabel, 11 years old, who is kind of shy of bees to the point that if she comes across some bees, she doesn't even like the sound of them either. So the drones or the male bees, can they hurt you? No. So drones, male bees do not have stingers, whereas the worker bees that you're seeing in your garden, they have stingers with a barbed edge. So when they sting you, it actually um, sticks to your skin or the place that they have stung you and they will fly off and die. Whereas a queen bee has a straight edge stinger and she can use that multiple times and she can retract it back in. So how does the queen bee create the hundreds, if not like in the thousands of bees that create ultimately that colony? So she will mate with multiple drones in her one flight and then come back to the hive to create the colony where those drones were passing on their genetics, if you will, to her to create the next up and coming colony. So since this is a lesson about the birds and the bees and I want to inject something yes. about birds, but you're telling me it's one queen bee and then a lot of drones 
they're trying to get their genetics mm -hmm. to pass on to the ultimately the colony and the next round of worker bees. Yes, and they pretty much compete for the queen. So they have to be fast and you know they have to be on top of it. So the best genetics are moving on to the next colony. So I just want to share that this is a situation of polygamy, which is where there's one individual with multiple partners, whereas there's a lot of birds that are monogamous, where they will actually find a partner and stay with that partner mm -hmm. for their entire life. And there's a lot of examples, which include the bald eagle, lovebirds, as their name implies, swans, geese, and even pigeons, as they, you know, have a nest and rear their babies, and they can do that multiple times in a year, they say, don't really have time to look for another partner. So they're yes. just so busy as a bonded pair for their entire life, rearing and, and, and growing their young. So there's a lot of examples of monogamy, which is where um, two individuals will mate for life and, and rear their young. So I just want to share, that's my lesson on the, the birds, uh, and the this bees. birds and the bees lesson. So the worker bees, which are all female, they can lay eggs too, right? Yes, they can. So the worker bees will lay unfertilized eggs, which will become the drones in the hive. Um, they are unable to create fertilized eggs because that takes place with the queen during her first flight. So the drones just kind of hang out in the hive and wait for that opportunity. All right, and I also have a fun fact for you, Charles. I didn't know if you knew this, but bees cannot see the color red. So our color spectrum starts at red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, and bees actually start at orange and moves on from there into the ultraviolet rays, which we cannot see. Oh, how cool. So I probably should not have been wearing blue today, right? Nope. Red is the color you want to wear. I was thinking red would have been kind of like that bull Yes. And, and I was going to be the bullseye and had it wore red, but <laughs> apparently if you're wearing red, you're invisible to the bee. Who would have known? Isn't that so interesting? So cool. Okay, so before we suit up your daughter to open up the hive, I have a quick question for you. So we have been using Ivy Organics in our garden for many years, and um, one of the things that we're always trying to be cautious of is bees and insects. And when we spray your products on our um, trees in our garden, so what kind of advice would you give as far as spraying the garden? Excellent question. We get that question a lot being if you use the Ivory Organics products, which, you know, serves to protect the plants at the time of transplant as well as, you know, weather extremes, whether it be too hot or too cold, but also repels a lot of insects. And a lot of people, you know, are concerned about how does that affect with bees? And the number one tip is to be applying the products early enough in the morning before the bee colony is active and, and begin foraging you know, into your garden. Um, and the other time of the day is towards the end of the day when they return back to the hive. Mm -hmm. So if you do it earlier or later, the product will dry onto the plant in a matter of like five to 20 minutes, depending on humidity levels. So the product also contains diatomaceous earth, which will protect your plants from chewing and gnawing and boring pests, which include aphids and beetles and so forth. But you don't want to get diatomaceous earth on the bee as well. And another reason to be applying it earlier in the morning or later in the day, if you're dealing with a beautiful flowering plant or tree, just as this peach tree is here behind me. While my daughter's getting suited up, a quick safety note to you children is if you see a bee, keep a safe distance and notify an adult. According to the Journal of Asthma and Allergy, between five to seven people will experience a severe allergic reaction to a bee sting. And another interesting fact is even though you've been stung by a bee when you're young and didn't experience an allergic reaction, when you get older, you become more likely to develop an allergic reaction to bee stings. So those are just a few considerations to be mindful of when having a close encounter with a bee. All right, so this is the queen extruder. And the only purpose of this is to keep her from coming up into these frames, which will strictly be honey. We don't want her laying eggs inside of our honey. We want the honey to be honey. All right, so you can put the bee brush down and I'm gonna have you use this end right here. And what you're going to do is you're gonna come under and pull up and we're going to take this frame out. So if you want, we can come right here and you can push it in. There we go. And so this frame 
has nothing on it. You can see some of the wax has been messed up a little bit, probably from us taking it out, but this is all capped honey. Oh, that's cool. So they put a cap on it so that way it will not um, drip out of the, the comb. So look at all of this honey that's capped. So we're going to brush these guys off and we're gonna freak your dad out. <laughs> oh, there's no way. This is unbelievable. And doesn't it feel heavy? I can't believe I'm doing this. But that's it. That's amazing. Thank you so much. All right. Welcome. So we just just spotted her. She walked over one of these frames, and I'm assuming. Actually, I think it was this one that I was just holding. Where did she go? Oh, there she is. All right. So I'm gonna see if you can spot her. She is almost twice the size of the other bees, in my opinion. She's a lot longer with her torso, um, and she has a big black um, circle on her back. She's a lot longer, doesn't really have stripes. So right here is the queen. You see her? See how much longer she is? And that big black circle on her back, it's much bigger than theirs. So I'm pushing her over that way. And now she's running back this way, following my finger. She's kind of seeing where do I need to go. She's looking for her workers that specifically help her feed her, kind of tell her what to do, where to go. And they kind of keep her safe. They're her, they're guards. So she's trying to hide in between these workers because she feels safest when they're they're around her because that's her source of food and protection so if you've enjoyed this lesson brought to you by she's rooted home be sure to check her out and follow her at she's rootedhome.com on instagram facebook and youtube if you've enjoyed this lesson as well, be sure to give us a thumbs up and be sure to share it with your gardening friends and family. As always, keep growing with Ivory Organics and wishing you all happy gardening. Which are the male bees, um, but they're kind of useless when it comes to the hive. Oh, even the turkeys are laughing. <laughs>